last two weeks uh, training camp, preparing for Serhi Bojcik. It's been cool. It's been super cool. Um, I've done everything that my conditioning coach, Chris Camacho, asked of me. I've done everything that I possibly could to, you know, just clear my mind and focus completely on the fight, the fight itself, uh, and all the battles that comes before the fight, you know, uh, I let my team take care of it. So I was able to just completely focus upon hardening my body, strengthening my will, and uh, getting it here, putting on a hell of a performance and winning in a, 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 a spectacular way. Beating Boy Chuck this next coming fight is gonna be it's gonna be extremely important to me, but that's just because how competitive I am. Uh, in the boxing world, this will definitely bring me to closer rankings to being a uh, to being able to fight for a world title and and getting me that much closer to being able to become the world champion. And uh, you know, I'll have a responsibility around that time, of course, but. For the most part, man, uh, this is just, you know, me putting my best foot forward and taking a step and two, being able to put the next best, uh, step forward, if that make any sense. Yeah, so uh, when I first got the, uh, the, the news that I was fighting in Puerto Rico, I was, I was excited, I've never been there. Uh, and this is an opportunity to become an international fighter, you know, uh, Puerto Rico being its own island. And eventually, hopefully, you know, I'll be able to broaden it, you know, fighting in different areas, different locations. But right now, you know, this time is Puerto Rico, which is super cool. Uh, I've already, you know, it, it, it wouldn't matter where I was fighting them at. December 3rd was the day I was supposed to fight him back when, uh, 2009, uh, excuse me, 2000, uh, 2020. But it didn't happen, so now this year, you know, uh, I'll be fighting him, but not in Hollywood. It'll be in Puerto Rico, which is completely fine. So it wouldn't have mattered where we was gonna fight at. It wouldn't have mattered, you know, uh, uh, the actual date. Once we fight, you know, the fight's gonna take place. There's nothing that we can do and change. So hopefully we both trained. I know I have. What I wanna do? I'm gonna go out now. This is crazy. Well, so far throughout this training camp, um, it's been really intense. Uh, we're fighting a, an opponent that's 18-0 with 18 knockouts. Um, that is a, a, a belt holder, WBC Continental title. And this training camp has been really more focused on Brandon just being himself. Um, you know, it's his return to the ring. We're going to Fight Island in Puerto Rico, uh, where there's, you know, champions are known for coming out of the country of Puerto Rico. And we just want to put on a good show. I've been just asking him to be himself. Um, the most important thing about this training camp is just us being all on the same page, a united front. And we're only here for Brandon. Um, my time here is committed to doing what I'm doing for the training camp and staying in my lane and allowing the other uh, coaches and assistant coaches um, and mentors to do what they're supposed to do. is consistency he's always in the gym when I say always in the gym he's one of those fighters that you don't have to beg to come to the gym to train or work out you pretty much have to let him know that you're gonna be in the gym and he's gonna show up in some way shape or form I'm seeing that his um and the difference between this training camp and last training camp is that I've seen him be more dialed in on focusing on this particular uh, opponent uh, with the last opponent we were preparing for this opponent and you know the COVID situation happened, and we had to make an adjustment. Sonny was a, a seasoned fighter, been there with a lot of seasoned opponents, but um, didn't have the uh, caliber of experience, of, say, of a, a Boa Chuck. So we really just focused on you know what Boa Chuck does, and then being Brandon Adams, what he does, and then the fight will speak for itself. <laughs>
to both men who warriors who get in the ring. Um, Bola Chuck is not a um, is not someone you can sleep on, but neither is a Brandon Adams. Um, this is a, a fight where the person who wins this fight will take a step up in their career and the fighter who loses this fight will take a step back. Um, I don't know that Boa Chuck's been in the ring with an opponent um, with the uh, experience level and the season of a Brandon Adams. But I can tell you, being here with Brandon Adams and um, being one of the people that invited him to Elite Pro Boxing when he came um, before the contender, while he was still, you know, um, going through his um, situation with boxing, um, I know that Brandon's seen all different types of fighters in the ring, and I think that he's going to be well versed and well prepared um, for Boa Chuck. And it's just the matter of what Brandon wants to do and when he wants to do it inside the ring. No one dictates. The fight to Brandon, Brandon dictates the fights to the opponents um, because he's so strong, he's very agile, and his mobility is second to none um, in the ring. So that's what I really see. I see if Boa Chuck comes to the ring and does what Boa Chuck does, which is usually a straightforward fighter, um, throws a lot of punches, kind of a marathon runner, so to speak. Uh, Brandon Adams has, has to be Brandon Adams, which we all know that he can be Brandon Adams. Even better than when he was before. He is like after that fight, it's like the same cannon never left. He, the cannon never left. He's just very high energy, very poised, very smart. I mean, very technical. The, the, the athleticism that he has is beyond crazy. It's just disbelief in my own eyes sometimes. Like, man, how does he do that? He's just very athletic, very skilled, a professional fighter. That's, that's really what you call him. Technique. It's not just really just throwing punches, volume punches. Really just knowing about my opponent or the opposition where to throw the punches, how to turn your feet, how to bob and weave, how to step over, pivot around, and, and it's just very technical. He teaches me a lot of techniques, because anybody can throw punches, but once you're in the ring, it's a whole different ball game. And it's very technical with him, and that's what I appreciate, you know, that's what I learned you know, from him. <laughs> Nothing against the other uh, fighter, great fighter, but I just think, in my humble opinion, Brandon in another level. You know, and Brandon's been with uh, world-class elite fighters, ranked champions like Charlo, for instance. I mean, I just, I really believe that you know, uh, his opponent is just not as technical as Brandon, and that will be the difference in, in this fight. Watch this fight on Ring City, USA, March 4th. Myself, our pro debut on March 6th in San Luis, Mexico. Get it, baby. We down for brown. Uh, brown and black. We, we all won. We all eat different shades yeah. of brown, baby. Yeah. So good. Yo, so <laughs> Coach Huntley won't be able to go to Puerto Rico for Brandon's fight on March 4th. Understanding that he's not going to be able to go because of COVID, and it would just be Chris Camacho and you in his corner. Talk to me about the responsibility and as far as comprehending being in his corner, giving him advice for this fight coming up on Thursday. It's, it's, it's huge. You know, um, every fight is grand you know, within his career, I'm right there by his side. It's my brothers, you know, be brothers keepers. Um, but it's a bigger responsibility because now, you know, I, 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 I'm, I mean, I'm already his right hand man, but you know, to compare the knowledge between me and Dove, like I just feel like it's just, 
<laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, I, I just can't, I can't measure up to it, but I, I'm not trying to get into a, a comparison battle because I don't want to stunt my growth, you know what I'm saying, right there working in the corner because potentially moving forward, this might be, you know, what I'm going to have to do moving forward. You know, Brandon, he trusts me a lot. And once again, you know, be thy brother's keeper. I'm always fall back to that because I feel like that notion already had pulled me back to start boxing again in general. So as of right now, I'm just really, really just trying to be a student. You know, I usually don't even watch fighters, to be honest. But honestly, this, these last three weeks, I've been watching fights, old school fights, modern day fights, you know, um, just to make sure I'm seeing things different from what I kind of close my perspective to kind of like see. I want to be open. I want to always have new growth. I want to be a sponge. I already try to pride myself on being a sponge, but I want to be more of a sponge, you know, because nothing that I do now will ever, 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 ever mount up to what our trainer, Dub Huntley, has experienced, has done, and the eyes that he has for fighters when they actually inside of the ring compete. Go to your right, go to your right. Yeah, so... When I see that and I think about it, I go, Terrell, don't try to be perfect because that's a fight within itself, but work on being perfect within seeing things that I wouldn't necessarily see prior because I'm not there in that proximity. You know, this gives me an opportunity to start looking at the opponent movement, strong side, weak side, upside, downside, you know, where they feel comfortable throwing. It, it, it gives me an opportunity to kind of dissect it from a perspective that I thought I'd never really, really, you know, delve in, delve in to actually watch and see boxing from a different perspective. Because it's one thing looking at it on a show or the TV or the video scope to actually being there in proximity. I kind of got a little gist of it when I was, you know, the second in the corner um, during the last fight, March 4th. But I didn't, I didn't, I didn't zoom in, zoom in. You know, I'm just being honest. Like I, I've seen everything that was going on. You know, I was kind of talking to Brandon, but I was more so focused on Brandon. You know, uh, but this time moving forward, you know, it's not that I'm not focused on Brandon, but I, I, I see I got to do a better job at multitasking, which I kind of truly, truly look forward into doing. Um, and I'm, I'm, I'm excited. You know, some might say that I'm lucky. But I'm super duper excited to have this opportunity to really be there and bring it home with my brother. My final uh, thoughts about this fight. Mainly really, man, uh, my focus just tell me to go out there and be who I am. The world have not yet to see the absolute best of Brandon, the Cannon Adams, and uh, slowly, surely, I'll be opening up that portal for you guys to, to be able to see a little bit more of me. You won't be able to see all of me because of uh, the guy that I'm fighting, but you'll get to see a lot of me. You'll get to see a lot of uh, characteristics, a lot of things that I'm capable of doing. Uh, you know, uh, a lot of traits, a lot of attributes, you know what I'm saying? Uh, it's gonna be a fun fight. So, like I said, I'm, I'm completely focused. I'm completely prepared. I know he's an undefeated fighter with the perfect record, but uh, I'm coming to spoil the plans like I planned on doing it December 3rd. Now, you know, this coming March 4th is just my time. It's just completely my time. Everything is uh, the way it's lining up. I can't argue with it, man. I'm just gonna go ahead and do it.